Um, I mean, no, I think forty two million is a fair price. I think he's a top player, an international, but um, you know, he hasn't has he played Champions League football, has he, you know, been in the Premier League for a number of years. I mean, um, he, I mean he's played in the final at Euros. That's yeah, no, I no, I I get he's he's got that and he's a star quality, but I mean why does it have to be astronomical prices all the time just because you've you know played a few games for your country? I I think The value it, to Leeds, is it that? He had two years left on his contract. Is, is his value to Leeds higher than forty two million to try and replace him? Do you think? Um, well, we will see, won't we? With the, with the player that they bring in, um, I think he's a really good player. I think it's a great signing. He has he's had some injuries. So I think that that will probably hurt the transfer fee as well. You know, they'll 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 argue over the fact that he's had a, a bad injury, didn't get really going properly last season. So it's a good signing. Solid signing. I, I, I would have said it was a bit cheap, but if you're right in saying he's got two years left on his deal, then obviously then it makes perfect sense because once you get to two years left, the, the, the power goes to the player. It comes out of the club's hands because they're, they're then panicking. If we don't sell him, if he's unhappy, we can't let him get down to a year because his fee's going to half again. So I think taking all things into consideration, 42 is probably the, the right amount. Yeah. Do you think he will be... What, what do you think his role will be at Manchester City, Andros? Is he going to start every game? What's it going to be like? You'd like to think if you spend 42 million, you're going to be a starter, but... Jack wasn't? Man City. Well, no, yeah, I know Man City. Yeah. Uh, and Rodri's a top, top player as well. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how Pep uses him and how he fits in the system. But you'd like to think spending that amount of money... Um, he won't start. He'd go straight into the midfield. No. I don't think he's a starter. I think he's going to be the same as what he does with Jack Grealish and and you know the other players in the side. He will ro- rotate the team. What you know, people think if you you spend loads of money and forty two, he has to start. Well, he, yeah. It's Manchester City. They're in every competition. They're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Pretty much every week, they get into the latter stages of every competition. So you need two players in every position. Rodri could pick up an injury. And yeah. you have to have come someone in to replace him. Rodri might play on the Saturday, and then Phillips plays on the Tuesday. That is just the that's the new modern way of having squads of twenty five players. And at that level, at the peak level of of the Premier League, they have two players who are brilliant in every position. I think that the Jack Grealish situation is probably quite different. I think he needed time to get used to the way Pep likes to play football. It's completely different to what Jack was used to at Villa. I think with Calvin Phillips, he's sort of, he's ready-made. He's perfect for Pep, the way he likes to recycle the ball, the way he presses off the ball. I think he's already made, so he doesn't need that sort of bedding in period. So again, I'd like to think that he'd be a starter if you're mm. spending that amount of money on him. Big season for Jack this, this season with, with, with Manchester City, because you can kind of use the excuse of, you know, the £100 million fee coming in and to have that bedding in period and kind of, you know, he had some good games, had some bad games, had some quiet games. This season's massive for him. He has to mm. step up this season, be a regular starter. He has to get more assists. He has to get more goals. Because in this Manchester City team, they will, you know, you're looked at like Raheem Sterling always steps up, scores goals, gets assists. Grealish didn't do that enough last season. He's, he's quite an unselfish player in that sense, isn't he? Like, there's there's lots of occasions if you watch him where he decides to pass rather than take the yeah, shot himself. But his assists still weren't at the level for someone when you pay hundred million not, pounds. But he's not starting but every game. I, I, I think Pep, well, I, I, for my opinion, Pep's not really fussed on assist numbers. I think he's all about, like you said, being unselfish. Can you find the right pass at the right time? I think. Your, your Twitter ex- ex- experts are uh, obsessed with goal contributions, but I think as long as Jack's contributing, as long as he's being unselfish the way Pep likes, as long as he's taking the easy option, um, I think he will get more game time and we'll see the, the, the Jack Grealish that we saw at Villa. Pep and stats is an interesting one as well, isn't it? Because like you say, he, he doesn't look, uh, he doesn't lean just on goals and assists because he mm. thinks, you know what, there's a way of measuring all the players on the pitch and that no, doesn't come out in your stats. Yeah, and he, and he does have a complete philosophy of how he plays and you can see that when Jack Grealish plays, he's thinking about how Pep's asking him to play. Mm, yeah. And you can see that and last season, he, there were times when he kind of was drifting because he wanted to go and get on the ball and you could see Pep you know arguing or shouting at him to stand back in his position where he he wants every single player on his side to play in a certain position a certain time when that person has the ball this is where I want you to be and I think that has took time for Grealish to get used to 
um, and has probably took a bit of freedom away from his game. But I think he needs to step up this season. He needs to be more of a, a big impact player who who mm. delivers when it matters. Mike has just messaged and said, Woodsy, it's five subs this season. Phillips will be playing every week. Uh, he's a Liverpool fan, but is he going to start every week? I think that's the question. No. And, and how, much, how much do you think um, five subs... You on board with that? How do you guys feel about that, Andros? As a as a I love, current I love player, how Jürg, I love how Jurgen Klopp has f- found a way to get his way again. He's been <laughs> moaning for years. They've been pushing back, and finally they've given in and given him his five subs. And he'll probably still use two or three in the, in the biggest games. But hey, who are we to argue with him? I think it's an unfair advantage for the top teams because there's going to be games now where they got more. Do they not play more games though? Yeah. Yeah, they play more games, but there's going to be, you know, there's going to be times when, you know, they can make four or five subs and their squads of players are going to come on and be still unbelievable players. So, and, you know, other teams like your, your, your Crystal Palace, your Nottingham Forest, they might have a good sort of 11 to 13 players. And then after that, it's difficult. You know, you have other players in the squad, but they're not going to be the same quality as your starters. Your Man Cities and Liverpool's, you, you know, you you make changes. You're coming on, oh, here we go. You know, Ru- Diaz yeah. is coming on or, you know, Nunes is coming on or, you know, Grealish is coming on. You're thinking, give us a break, you know. So I think it's a little bit unfair and you're going to see teams now like Man City blow teams away 3-4-0 up and you yeah. see Pep make four changes. I think in the biggest games, uh, Liverpool and City, they, they use one or two subs. They don't use the full three subs that they, that it has been. I think, like Jamie said, it's the games against Crystal Palace or uh, Brentford, the, the games where they can't break teams down. It's nil-nil. They've got 11 behind the ball. Right, can we bring on five world-class internationals who are fresh, who can who can change the game? Can we bring them on to, to break down this stubborn defence? And I think that's where it, I think it becomes a bit unfair, but... Like I said, who are we to uh, who are we to argue? Well, it is your job, both of you, to argue. So you're doing great so far. <laughs> yeah. But I do also have to ask. I mean, when you look at that, we, we always say, don't we? In the Premier League, you just never know. You can't really predict scores. It's not like other uh, leagues around the world where you look at it and you kind of go, look, I kind of know what's going to happen in this league. Yeah. I know who's going to finish top two. Uh, it's already kind of predetermined because of the way that the, the difference in in squads. But when you look at the five sub rule, do you think it makes, I think you're saying it does, do do you think it makes the Premier League less competitive, Andros? I don't think it makes it less competitive. It's still going to be the most competitive league in the world, but I think it just gives the top sides that extra advantage. And Mm. hopefully my my side is one of those teams that will have the advantage um, with the squad that we're looking to build. And on a personal level as well, coming back from an ACL injury, yeah. five subs will probably suit me. Yeah. So, but I just think uh, it, on, on the whole, I just think it suits you, Jurgen Klopp's uh, yeah. and your Pep Guardiola's yeah. who have. I'd love it as a world class internationals. I'd love it as a player because I was I'd be the, the fifth sub that yeah. comes on, get the appearance fee, <laughs> lovely jubbly, cheers, gaffer. Five minutes left. Thanks for coming. Oh God! Eh? Another another <laughs> bit of dollar in the bin. You can't. You you really try to endear yourself <laughs> to people, and it just doesn't. It's I'm just only winding you up. It's not working, is it? Um, one thing I wanted to um, push you on is is you said Andros that Jurgen's got his way. How much sway do you think Jurgen has in the Premier League? Clearly a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we saw last season. I think even the season before, just constantly banging on, banging on votes, votes on votes on votes, getting pushed back. And then all of a sudden mm. they announced uh, five subs eventually. I think as well, last season, again, moaning about schedule, moaning about this, moaning about that. All of a sudden, uh, I think it was BT Sport would uh, put a Liverpool game Saturday, Saturday evening, Saturday night, which I've never seen before in the Premier League. So obviously all of this moaning, moaning, obviously um, puts pressure on the authorities to give him what he wants and he has got what he wants on many on many occasions yeah Jurgen Klopp I, I mean I've been told by managers who are in on some of the zoom calls and stuff that they have with LMA meetings and things like that that he's very vocal and very he, he doesn't Pep's very just sit back doesn't say too much Jurgen Klopp is very vocal on his opinions and what he thinks and he's not afraid to say it to the other managers. But do you think, so So it's voted by the Premier League managers, isn't it? So the five-sub rule, it has to be voted for and you get a majority and apparently 14 of the of the managers voted for the five-sub rule. Mm. So out of a lot of them, 14. So you, are you sort of saying you think he's influential, that he influences other managers? I, 
How, how could that happen? If you're a manager and you're sitting there, you're not going to vote for what's good for Liverpool. If no, it's not you're good only for you. Gonna, you are going to do what you think's right for your football club. Don't know who the 14 teams are, but there's obviously reasons behind why they think it's it's good for them. They're not going to vote, to, you know, to help Liverpool out. But they've probably been given all the 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 facts about it and all the sort of opinions of what is right and wrong in it, and made a decision. So. Do you know, we know, time will we, tell if, if it has been an advantage for the better sides. Do we know what Everton would have voted for, Andros? Uh, I'm not too sure. Do, that, <laughs> do you have the info there? No, no, no. I just thought <laughs> current Everton player might be able to give me a bit of insight. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.